Okay, I'll be doing this without slides today, I'm afraid. Um, I'm here to talk to you uh, about a place in London called Silicon Roundabout. Now, Silicon Roundabout sounds a bit like a joke, and uh, in some ways it is. It's, uh, it started off that way, but it's, um, it's a real place, and it's actually become quite important to the uh, internet industry in London. And um, it's an experience which I think has lessons for uh, entrepreneurs all over Europe and, um, and is an example that could be replicated um, anywhere. So um, I, uh, I write for the Financial Times. Um, I, I cover digital media there. And uh, thank you. And, the, um, and so I, uh, I, I get to meet a lot of geeks, uh, which is great because I try to be quite geeky myself. And um, I, uh, I, I, I find myself going more and more um, to this area around Old Street Roundabout. Now, Old Street is, uh, is not the most glamorous uh, part of town. Um, it's, uh, it's noisy, it's, it's dirty, it's not like Mayfair or, or Notting Hill. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's therefore, it's, it's quite cheap. And so um, a lot of internet companies who, who maybe just have one or two people uh, employed and are um, uh, trying to start out uh, move there because, because of the, the low price to start with. And um, one of these companies uh, is called Moo, uh, like, like the cow, and um, they make uh, business cards based on the um, photos which you put up onto Facebook and Twitter uh, and uh, Flickr. And so um, they throw big parties every summer, uh, and they um, partly like doing this because people swap more business cards, so they sell more business cards. But it's also important because uh, the guy who founded it, Richard Moross, is a, a big believer in community. He really likes uh, the idea of um, uh, getting people together, and, and, and starting a business is a, is a really scary thing. It's a very hard thing, uh, and it's not good to do if you're by yourself. So um, I was at one of these parties uh, on, uh, on Brick Lane, um, just near uh, Old Street, and um, I was talking to a guy uh, from a, a startup uh, called uh, Doppler, a different Doppler to the, to the sponsor here. They are a travel social network. They, um, you tell them where you're going on holiday and the places you stay, and, and they make recommendations based on the, um, the other uh, places that your friends have visited. And um, this was quite a, quite a cool um, startup at, at the time. It's, it's been bought by Nokia since then, but it was um, the cooler geeks were all, were all using it. And um, the, uh, we, were, we were chatting over beer and, and pizza, because if you want developers to come to anything, you have to give them beer and pizza. And um, it, uh, we, we was talking to this guy, Matt Bidolf, who was the technology officer there. And um, he decided that they, they really needed a name for all of these companies that were um, starting up around, around Old Street. They had their offices there, so did Moo, and um, a company called uh, Last FM, which uh, you may have heard of, which is a music recommendation service, and they, um, uh, they were bought by CBS, the American broadcaster, for $140 million. So they were, you know, this was a successful little area. Um, he reckoned there were about 15 internet companies around there at the time. So he decided that if you, if you gave the area a name, then people would start talking about it more, and it would, it would gain momentum, and it would, uh, it would make it easier to talk about the companies in this area. So he decided that uh, if, um, if California had Silicon Valley, um, then uh, London should have Silicon Roundabout. So it was playing it you know, low down to start with. It wasn't um, promising too much uh, at this stage. Um, but it was a, it was a nice phrase, uh, and it was, it was sort of jokey and, and humorous. And, um, and so I thought I should write about it. So I, I went home and, um, and got up the next day and, and, and wrote a blog, because you should never drink and blog. Um, you should always wait till the next morning. And, um, and so I wrote a story uh, with uh, asking the question with, with, with this picture, which is um, Silicon Roundabout, um, the, the glamour. And uh, saying, is this the heart of London's new dot-com boom? And um, it, it got a bit of attention, but it, it, it got picked up um, by the, the Evening Standard. They, they cottoned onto the same thing, which is the, the evening newspaper in, in London. And, uh, and they wrote a story about it. And, and since then, we've had um, stories in the, in the Sunday Times, in the, uh, in the Guardian, in The Economist, all talking about this idea of Silicon Roundabout. So all of a sudden, an idea that started off as a joke was gaining real momentum. And um, McKinsey, the, the consultancy, have just done a big study into, into this area. And um, they now think that there are 170 internet companies um, in this area. And so um, in, in less than three years, uh, we've had a, a number of internet companies in this area increase almost 10 times. 
And um, I think one of the things about writing about it and, and, and giving it a name like this is that you can, um, you can sort of zoom out. And instead of making people look at something like this, they can see the sort of bright lights of the city and, and the potential um, of the area. Now, there were lots of other reasons why Old Street was, a, was an appealing area for, for, for entrepreneurs to move to. It's, it's a creative area. There's, there's lots of artists and designers and cool shops, great bars. And if you're pouring your heart and soul into a company, you, you really need to have, um, you know, good things on your doorstep because you're going to be working there till late. And, um, and also, um, there, are, there are good uh, economic reasons for, for, for starting a company in, in, a, in a cluster. Um, there's a chap called Edward Gleiser, who is an economist at Harvard, and he uh, has done some calculations that if you have a, a 9%, no, sorry, a 10% increase in the number of firms per employee, i.e. more smaller companies rather than fewer big companies in an area, you create 9% more employment over a period of 20 years. So, um, and also, startups are, are more likely to be successful if they're in a, if they're in a little cluster, according to, uh, according to McKinsey. So there are kind of good reasons for all of this stuff to, to be going on. So um, this eventually, uh, this, this whole Silicon Roundabout idea got the attention of the government. And so in November last year, uh, David Cameron, uh, the Prime Minister, was, was standing up at a, uh, an event on, on Brick Lane, just down the road from where we'd been drinking beer and pizza. And um, he decided that it was now going to be called East London Tech City. And there would be uh, all of these incentives for uh, companies to move there. And Google and Intel and lots of big companies promised that they would do lots of good things. And it also ties into the idea of, um, of the legacy of the Olympics, which is uh, in London next year. And um, we need to find something to do with, uh, with some of the buildings after that. So um, it's, uh, it, but it's, it's you know, the, the government scheme itself is, is still a bit of a startup. It's still, it's still a work in progress. But we, we had um, Startup Britain uh, this week, which was another, another government scheme to try and stimulate entrepreneurship. Because um, as in other parts of Europe, the, the UK's economy is, is, is in sort of mixed shape at the moment. It's, it's not necessarily the, uh, the kind of strongest uh, in, in many areas. Consumer confidence is, is not great. And so I think David Cameron and, and others feel that uh, technology and, and the internet provides a, a real way to, um, to grow things fast and, 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 and see as a, as a kind of way of making something in, in Britain again. And so um, that was all great. The, the, the entrepreneurs in, in Old Street and Shoreditch all, all welcomed um, the government's involvement. But, but the bit they haven't quite caught on with is, is, this, is the tagline. So people still seem to talk about it as Silicon Roundabout rather than East London Tech City. And um, I was at a conference last week with uh, people even wearing it on T-shirts now. So um, it's kind of, it has gained that sort of momentum, even, um, even though it's a silly phrase and, and journalists like, to, like me like to throw it around. It, 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 it makes it easier for all of us to talk about what's going on in that area in a, in a kind of shorthand. So, um, some of the companies that are, that are here are, are actually not much to do with um, silicon, which is obviously in, in, in microchips, um, but they're, they're all digital media companies. So there are iPhone app makers, there are games companies, there are um, people who make uh, uh, web design and, and e-commerce. And um, I just want to give you a few examples of a, a few of the companies that are really making a big noise um, beyond Silicon Roundabout. So the first one is Moshi Monsters. Moshi Monsters is kind of a Facebook for kids. And it's, uh, you, you create your monster, and, and you, you, you put it in a little house, and um, you give it clothes, and it goes out and talks to other monsters in a, in a friendly way. It's, it's great. Um, I, I have one as well, but it, 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 it's, it's a bit sick at the moment. Um, neglect, probably. And, um, the, uh, it's a really, really popular um, service. So something like one in three British children now have a Moshi monster. It's amazing. And they get tens of millions of people visiting this website. Um, no, sorry, tens of millions of monsters have been created. Uh, sorry, that, <laughs> that's, I'm sure it's the same. Um, uh, tens of millions of monsters have been, have been created all over the world. Um, and so this is something which is, is being exported from, from Britain. And the interesting thing about Moshi Monsters, um, which I think is one of the bigger trends that's happening on the internet at the moment, is it's, it's not just about creating a website and a web service. There are now Moshi Monsters trading cards. There are cuddly toys. There's magazines. There's even going to be a, a TV show. So it's really something which is taking an online brand and, and taking it offline. And Angry Birds, the, the iPhone game, is, is doing similar things as well. They, they all want to be the Disney for the digital age. So um, another of the, uh, the companies that's on uh, Silicon Roundabout is called TweetDeck. 
If you're a, a Twitter addict, you may, you may already know about TweetDeck. It, it lets you um, monitor in all of these columns here, which uh, you have a constant stream of all of your friends' updates and search terms. And it's, it's great if you're a real enthusiast for, for Twitter. And you can now use it for Facebook and, and LinkedIn and all of these other things. So um, these guys actually rented an office from, from Moo. Um, so they're a sort of uh, a, a little sort of company. Um, they've been, this software has been downloaded 20 million times now. And um, it's free. Uh, so they don't actually have any sales as such, but um, they're, uh, they're in talks at the moment with a, a, a company in, in Silicon Valley um, to be bought for possibly somewhere in the region of $30 million. So this is a company which has no revenues, but has still created a huge amount of value. And I think the other thing that's interesting about TweetDeck and, and other companies in, um, uh, in the London ecosystem is that they're not just... Um, they're not just trying to create a, uh, a, a big social network that competes head on with, with Facebook and Twitter. They're, they're trying to do something which, which rides on the back of it. And so um, the idea, I guess, is to, is to find a niche which is, is big enough to make a big business out of, but, but small enough that Twitter and Facebook don't come and do it themselves. And um, so it's a, there's another company called Peer Index, which um, gives you a sort of ranking based on uh, how many um, not just how many followers you have on Twitter, but also how often they talk to you and, and kind of gives you a reputation score out of 100. So you know how good you are at Twitter, which is great if you're, if you're a sort of marketing guy and you want to be able to prove to your boss that you know, you're, you're really not just wasting time chatting to your mate. Um, so it's, a, it's another good um, kind of a service. Um, but it, it's not just services that are kind of piggying back on, piggybacking on other services. There is another company. It's not strictly in Silicon Roundabout, but it's, it's based in London. It was founded by uh, a Russian guy, um, and it's actually very popular in, in sort of Latin America and, and Spain and, and France, but not so much in the UK or the US. It's called Badu, and um, it's, uh, they describe it as if, um, if Facebook is for people that you already know, then um, Badu is for people that you, you don't yet know, and, and maybe you'd want to meet them, you know, for chats and other stuff. Um, <laughs> And, um, and they're now the second most popular application on the whole of Facebook. So they're more popular than Farmville, which is kind of insane. They've got 120 million people registered on this site. And they also have this iPhone app, which um, tells you other people that are looking for um, chats uh, in the area, like, or you know, almost in, in the room. So that's handy. Um, and, um, and so I, I think what, what all of these companies really have in common is, is that they're all... Um, they're all internet-only companies. They're, they're, they've, they've built what they're doing very quickly, um, but also, in, in some cases, quite cheaply. So um, it, this is something you, you can use uh, open source software. You can, you can rent hosting from Amazon.com or, or somebody like that. And you can, you can try these ideas for a lot less than, than it used to cost, certainly 10 years ago in the dot-com boom when people had to pour huge amounts of money. And, and many of these companies have got all of these tens of millions of, of users without spending anything on advertising. So um, it, still, it still has that huge opportunity for growth. And, and that's not to say that there won't be companies that don't do well. Um, I mean, there's a reason why the government has to get involved to encourage people to invest in technology, because it's really, really risky. Um, and so some people will, will fail. But um, if you can, you know, I guess, why not try something in the evenings and, and put a product online? And if, if people like it, you can, you can keep using it and, and keep going with it and maybe quit your job. But if, if, uh, if they don't, then you can try something else. And um, I think the other thing, the, 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 the McKinsey uh, guys did a, did a study which, um, which showed that they, uh, there, are, there are other conditions that you need for, for clusters to kind of work. You need to have um, the right kind of support from, from investors and, and the government, so not too little and, and not too much, um, sort of Goldilocks uh, type of a thing. And then if you, um, you also need to, to find the right place and focus on it. Uh, and you need things like good broadband speeds and um, a, a, a good sort of international connections and those kinds of things. But, but many of these companies have been started by people that, that aren't British. They're in London, but there's, there's nothing particularly British about them. And so I guess the, um, the, the thing that I, I kind of want to leave you with is that although um, Silicon Valley has had a monopoly on internet innovation for a long time, there's really no reason why Silicon Roundabout or, or other kind of ideas that, uh, that could pop up um, are, uh, couldn't be replicated um, all over Europe. And I, I think the, the real change that I've seen just in, in the few years that I've been covering um, uh, the industry is, is there's a real change in the mentality of European 
entrepreneurs. You, you, you're, you're not just wanting to, um, to build a Facebook for France or a, or a, or a Twitter for Germany, but, but create things that can really take on the whole world and, um, and do that from, from, from Europe or from London or from Berlin or from Barcelona or from Thessaloniki. And um, so uh, hopefully with uh, some of these examples, you can see that Silicon Roundabout could be anywhere across Europe, and maybe we can have hundreds of these kinds of sites popping up all over Europe. Thank you.